Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Mafia and Gangsters video. Alright, it is a whole new month, so let's go ahead and let's do a new entry here for this playlist. Who knows, I may just do some more later on this month because of their continued popularity. It's still so amazing to see that there's so many good views associated with these videos. So, definitely a lot of fans out there and I definitely appreciate all of your support on there. This random entry once again comes from one of the Mafia that we com pages and in this case it has to do with yet another fascinating entry within the world of the mafia this was a member who was pretty much in it through and through for most of his life and actually ended up being in the witness protection program i'm surprised by how many of these mafia members become informants you would think again that omerta and other forms of life deaths uh, end up being almost like they're thrown away on a casual basis in the mafia but more on that here in a minute but it has to do with this you're looking at him now he went by the name of vincent teresa but as always they had nicknames and so more commonly he was known as fat Vinny. and you can see why essentially this was his nickname so let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating information associated with Fat Vinny. Now, this was a guy who was born in Revere, Massachusetts back in 1930. I don't exactly have the date as to when he was born, but that'll give you an idea at least a year he was uh, in it. And so uh, whenever he was born, already within his family, he had some members that were part of the Sicilian Mafia. For example, he was the grandson of a guy by the name of Vincente. Teresi, and this was someone that had moved here in the United States in the late 1800s and then ended up making some good fortunes associated with being a bootlegger during the Prohibition time period. Also, his uncle, a guy by the name of Dominic Sandy Mac Teresa, was a driver for yet another mob boss, someone by the name of Joseph Lombardo. And he was someone that also uh, became an influence of sorts within young Fat Vinny's life. But at least while he was in elementary slash primary school, I think that was somewhere around that time period, or actually my apologies, it was more towards his later teen years, that's when um, Fat Vinny developed actually a gambling addiction. I don't know if this was necessarily tied to slots or if it was tied to other things involving like card games. Most likely it was something along those lines because you would imagine that uh, it's kind of hard for a youngster to be playing slot machines somewhere without being caught. But this led him to actually f uh, start a life in crime because he had to fill this gambling addiction and the dollars that it took from him by doing burglary. So eventually he ended up doing more than a dozen burglaries around that area and he was finally caught. Fat, Vin Fat Vinny was caught while he was trying to do yet another burglary of a meat market in this case, but he ended up being let go. No jail time associated with it. I'm kind of sure that infuriated the, the denizens of the meat market, the owners of them, because to them, they probably felt that there was no justice served in that case, but he ended up eventually being expelled from school just as after he completed the ninth grade, and then that was it. No more schooling for him, and then that's when he went actually into the United States Navy. So, how about that? There was at least one point within Fat Vinny's life where he could have made something of a difference. Instead of, let's say, going into the world of mafia and gangsters, he could have been there at least within the United States Navy and made a career out of it. But as it turns out, he must have had a temper of some sort because shortly afterward, I think this was less than about a year's time or so, that's when he had an altercation with one of his superior officers. And so he was formally court-martialed and then also given a bad conduct discharge. Some of you that are within the Navy, and other forms of military branches let me know does that mean that it's like a dishonorable discharge is that pretty much it where it's like uh, you're removed and then removed of all ranks everything else that's given to you not that i think he got very far within the united states navy but still i'm wondering how that impacted him afterward not that i think he actually cared about it too but all of this ended up happening Again, just shortly after he joined the United States Navy in uh, around that time period, and then he ended up being expelled in 1948. But either way, though, he went on to be um, holding several jobs here and there. <laughs> As it turns out, though, he had to leave several of them because once again, his criminality came into play. Fat Vinny ended up stealing from most of his employers. And so because of it, um, he ended up just being fired from several of those places. But at least there was some good news in his life. He ended up 
actually marrying his childhood sweetheart, a lady by the name of Blanche Balsalman, during that same time period. And what a way to reward her because he continued his criminal spree by embarking on yet other items like bank robberies and so on. So again, even from a young life, pretty much until that short stint in the Navy, and then coming back out of it, he definitely had opportunities to do something. But no, he ended up still doing so many bad things within his life, which led to the next course in his quote unquote career. And that was finally doing things associated with the mafia. Remember, I was mentioning those connections he had earlier on the family side. Well, he ended up working for a guy by the name of Enrico Tamileo, thanks to some of those connections, especially from his uncle. And this was part of the Patriarca crime family. And and so there he actually excelled. Fat Vinny was doing a really good job. He ended up buying a bunch of businesses and I'm guessing he was more of like the person up front, in other words, the straw buyer as they're called, just buying up businesses, creating a front of some sort, and then burning them down afterwards for insurance money. You kind of saw that within the film Goodfellas. You saw a hint of it. Remember that scene where Tommy and then Henry were within that restaurant, the one that ended up going belly up, and so the only way they could recoup money back out of it was to burn it down and then claim insurance money from it. It seems like that's what this guy was doing. This guy, Fat Vinny, was was able to buy up these businesses that I'm guessing were probably on the down low, like in other words, they were just out and about of business, probably buying them for pennies on the dollar and then maxing out insurance type stuff to make sure that they can get a lot of money associated with it. It's like straight from the movie Goodfellas. And then he used this money to buy up a nightclub and then also it created another front of sorts as far as loan sharking and racketeering stuff. So he was making some pretty good good bank for the Patriarch of Crime family. And at one point, he was even involved with a million dollar heist of a Ming Dynasty Jade. So how about that? It was kind of like a little bit of a step up from the days of the good fella. Remember how there's that uh, Lufthansa heist that's considered one of the uh, most prominent heists of all times. Well, here's one. It may not have been money, but at least it was a Jade jewelry of some sort and here he was involved in it and uh, b because of his lack of uh, lack of evidence that was tied to him fat Vinny was eventually let go but it goes to show again the kind of mindset that he was in he was absolutely just gung-ho no pun intended when it came to making sure that he could make money for it in fact he ended up even doing two other new criminal enterprises which interestingly enough linked back to his gambling addiction days I imagine that the this gambling addiction never really went away from him, but now he was able to incorporate it to make even more money for his crime family. And one of them was this. He ended up uh, creating something along the lines of a venture for wealthy gamblers. So somewhere there, he would allow them, and I imagine it involved planes, it involved maybe trains, it involved limos, it involved hotel stays, stuff like that. He would have these people flown in very wealthy gamblers to various parts of Las Vegas and then outside in international places like Europe and the Caribbean. And then he would make sure that, yes, they were wined and dined and just given the proper VIP treatment and they would probably pay a good price for it. But he was taking care of everything from it. But interestingly enough, he would introduce these wealthy gamblers to his proposals, which was using that money. Like if they gave him extra money, he would in turn Turn, uh, move it around into his areas. Remember I was mentioning earlier as far as loan sharking and racketeering? Well, it sounds like that's what he was doing. Like he was stating, I can use your money to, bo to, to move into my areas here and then it'll have a really good return because of the interest rates that I charge some of the other people that take these loans. And so no doubt some of them took the bait, but it ended up binding them in the hand afterward. Because as it turns out, Fat Vinny would never pay them back anything. He would not pay any interest. He would not pay any of the amounts owed back to them at all. And then these wealthy gamblers, if they tried to do anything afterward, that's when Fat Vinny apparently would threaten them. He would use his muscle and then also some of his uh, violent comp compatriots, whoever they are, to let them know, hey, if you try to do anything, then essentially we're going to threaten you almost up to your life. So you could totally uh, think of in your head, 
said that these wealthy gamblers at that point would just shut up and not do anything else because they didn't want to be involved with someone so heavily into the world of the mafia. And then his other venture happened to be not on the gambling side, but... It involved actually stealing bonds. Bonds are interesting little markets, uh, tools of markets of financial instruments because they can be used to be able to um, be passed from one person to another, but there's no name tied to them. If you have a bond, then it's essentially under your name, depending on the type of bond it is. And then if you give it to someone else, then it's under that person's name without being in that person's name. It's almost like if you had a dollar in your hand, it's yours. But if you have it to someone else, then it's someone else's. And that's what he was doing. He was selling and then buying and then stealing other types of bonds and then forged bonds as well. And then that's where things just took a worse turn for Fat Vinny. Eventually, all of his criminal life ended up capturing in and crashing down in his world. And this is what happened. One of his own associates, talk about future irony, one of his own associates, the ones who were selling these stolen and forged bonds, was actually caught by the FBI. And so because this person wanted to save themselves, they ended up revealing that it was Fat Vinny that was involved within this heist. Like he was the one that was orchestrating these things. And so the FBI eventually started following Fat Vinny. And then, of course, they got him. They got him indicted and they ended up sentencing him. 20 years, that's a lot, 20 years for conspiracy and transporting stolen securities, major, major stuff. That's probably more years than if you committed some kind of murder within certain types of past famous cases in the world of the mafia. But as it turns out, while he was serving some time period at a location called the Lewisburg Penitentiary, and interestingly enough, he was next to some big names associated in the world of mafia like John Gotti and then Carmine Galanti. And even Jimmy Hoffa, he was in that same area too. That's when he realized his own crime family, the patriarchal crime family, the same one that he had committed all these crimes to and then earned a huge amount of money, not just for himself, but also for them, which is, of course, what most mafia members have to do. They have to continue to make this money on a daily basis and then give it to their bosses and then their bosses and so on. Well, as it turns out, four million of that dollars that was going to go to his own family, to Fat Vinny's family, which I'm sure he was counting on to help support them while he was there in prison, they kept the money. The crime family, the patriarchal crime family, he found out that they did not give that money to his own family. And so because of this, he became just so disillusioned, so enraged at what was occurring. He in turn became an informant for the FBI. He probably pursued them or vice versa. They probably let him know about what was going on with that $4 million cash. Someone must let me know, please, in the comments which way it was. But either way, though, he ended up agreeing to become an informant. And in 1971, he testified in front of the U.S. Senate, and his testimony actually ended up putting over 50 mobsters away. And in fact, it was considered so credible that there was, even when evidence was introduced, that the only way for Fat Vinny to have become a lieutenant within the patriarchal crime family normally would have involved having to murder someone. In his case, he said that no, that he never committed any murder. There was no proof of it. The U.S. government believed him because he was a very, very very valuable witness. I don't know if he did or didn't, but there was no proof of it associated with it, no evidence at all. And so they took him at his word. That's how much credibility he had when he was giving all of his testimony at that time. That's why it led to so many mobsters, over 50 mobsters, over 50 gangsters that ended up being indicted because of his testimony. And then, of course, part of being an informant was he ended up being in the, in the witness protection program. And then because of it, him and his family ended up being in a whole new place, whole new place, whole new life. And it's all because, again, of entering his informant status. So remember, I was mentioning a couple of minutes ago, the irony, his associate ended up ratting him out, ended up ratting Fat Vinny out to the FBI to save himself. And then now Fat Vinny, almost in a form of revenge, almost in a form of, of, of justice in his view, he wanted to make sure that because of the money that was stolen from him, that was meant for his family, 
Finally, he in turn became an informant and, of course, ended up uh, releasing him afterward from jail. They no longer have to be in there, in other words, for 20 years. If you wonder what happened later on with Fat Vinny, he ended up actually doing three books. I don't know if this was during his time as a witness protection program or if he was someone that was already working on this beforehand, but he did three books altogether. One of them was called My Life in the Mafia, and this is probably his most famous one, and it documented everything within his career as a gangster. And then also there's another one that he wrote called Vincent Teresa's Mafia, and this was his time in the Witness Protection Program in of itself. And then he also wrote a fictional novel by, by the name of Wise Guys, which is ironically the same name that the book from Henry Hill, the one that he wrote, um, it was if a lot of people don't know this but goodfellas was not the original name um of the film or the novel it was a wise guys but it was changed afterward because i think there was some other show that was on that was called wise guys at the time but yeah he ended up becoming a prolific author three books all together and then he ended up living in certain areas interestingly enough fat Vinny under the witness protection program must have not liked it at all. In fact, he formed a lot of protests to them because he felt that him and his family weren't necessarily being given the proper safety or the proper conditions that they were guaranteed. He felt they had they, they had showed no appreciation for the risks that he took for them, especially when it came to riding out on all the other 50 mobsters out there. And so it seems like he was actually kicked out of there. Someone must uh, let me know. Be the reason I mention that is because later on, when he was living under another identity um, he was arrested or charged with conspiracy to import cocaine so it's clear that he was doing some other type of criminal activity while he was still within or out of the witness protection program i just don't have any idea um, how long this was happening in his case um, but who knows maybe he was in and out of it maybe he was in it the whole time I just don't have that full information but he definitely didn't like the conditions that he was in and pretty much up until that time until February 1990 that's when he died of natural causes in his case it was kidney failure while he was living in Seattle uh, what was interesting is that he was someone that was scared about what was going to happen from the patriarchal crime family the same family that he again ran it out on over 50 mobsters from um, and so he was scared or uh, feared for his life because of what they could do and you no know, doubt he was living with one eye open for most of his time period but as it turns out he just ended up dying of those natural causes um, in this case from kidney failure so that's pretty much it that's all the information associated with this lifelong gangster fat Vinny. I'm wondering if he, in turn, was a little bit of an inspiration for The Simpsons. Fat Tony, you know how Fat Tony from there is a, a is kind of like a prominent side character, and both of them are a little bit over. Like uh, Fat Vinny, at least, uh, is is of course morbidly obese, but uh, Fat Tony is not that obese, but he still shows up as as a pretty big guy within uh, the The Simpsons episodes. So I'm wondering if he served as a little bit of an inspiration. But if anybody has any more info, anything else I might have missed, then please. Post those comments below. And again, anyone there that I was mentioning earlier um, involved in the Navy or other forms of branches of the military, um, what happens on a bad conduct discharge, if you know if that means that he was just basically kicked out, no chance to return. I only ask because, again, that was the only point up to, uh, it seemed like in Fat Benny's life that he could do something to be able to clear himself and then form a whole new pathway. But no, he ended up being again back within the world of mafia and gangsters. So, all right everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care.